Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Lovely to have you again. This week we're going to pick up a long lost thread. Back in I think September of last year, let me check, was it September? Uh, yeah, September 29th was the last time we worked on this together. Uh, I decided that we together were going to build a React Native application and we made Real good progress. We got, I think, was it seven videos together making this application, and then I just stopped. I didn't give an explanation, didn't tell you why, and it just kind of fell off my YouTube page. I kind of owe you an explanation. I feel like I should tell you why I stopped making these videos. Uh, I was getting to a certain point, and so just to catch you up to speed, if you haven't seen these videos, they're uh, linked down my page a little bit. If you have to scroll back to September, obviously that's when I was recording them. Uh, and it was us building a everyday app where you could take a picture of your face every day. And then once you're done, you could make a slideshow, a video of all those pictures stitched together so you could have a nice little video of your face changing over time. I use an, I use an app to start in the app store. I don't have my own because I want to think it'd be a fun thing to do. The reason why I stopped building that app was because we were getting to a certain point in that app's development cycle where uh, it was gonna get hard. And, and uh, to put it more concretely, we were using Expo, which is, Expo is to React Native as Ruby on Rails is to Rails. It's a wrapper that's opinionated, that provides a lot of, so many things out of the box. But some things, obviously, it can't do because you can't do everything. And essentially, we were pretty much butting up against that limit. The, the functionality of actually stitching together all those pictures into a video, why would Expo include that behavior by default? That's not a thing that most applications need to do. Expo provides functionality that 80% uh, uh, of applications need to do. They try to tackle the majority of use cases and then if you have to deal with your own bespoke use cases and you can kind of eject out of Expo and do your own thing. And I was getting to that point and well, to put it simply, uh, I got scared. Uh, I was a little bit scared to actually do that and figure out the best way to deliver that information to you, so I just took the easy way out and stopped. Well, people told me that they actually enjoyed that series and I felt bad that I actually didn't, sirens, every time in New York City. I felt bad that I actually didn't finish it because I, I actually, one of my biggest pet peeves is, is I hate not finishing things. So uh, let's finish this thing. Like we, we've made so much progress. We're so close. Let's let, let's finish making this React Native app. Are you are you are you with me on this? Are you okay with that? Because we'll we'll be doing some pair programming together. And I th and I think you know, frankly, how do I focus this? I, I mean, really, uh, you you gotta finish things. And and really, it's be it's good to finish things, even if you're not happy with the end result. It's still it's still version one. You gotta get that MVP. You gotta get that MVP working before you can really move on to things. So so I apologize that I didn't finish it before, uh, but we, we gotta, you, you and me, let's, let's, let's together, we're, we're gonna finish this thing. All right? All right, let's, let me get you caught up to speed on, on where we are right now. Let's, let's get back on the same page because uh, I've done some work after hours, if that's such a thing, I'm already making these videos after work, and if I'm doing work outside of making these videos, is that after hours of my after hours work? Uh, that's way too confusing. Any case, uh, so when we last made this application, it was back in September 29, uh, September 29, September 29, 2018, and uh, back when that was the case, let's go and browse this source code together, uh, browse files, the version of Expo that we were using, if I go to app.json, is uh, Expo 30. Well, if you go to the Expo blog, you'll see that their latest version is actually uh, Expo 33. So that's, that's three versions that we have to really upgrade for. And th there's many reasons why I want to upgrade us to the latest Expo version. One, I'm a fan of staying up to date on things. I love the new features that come along with it, the bug fixes, things tend to work better with newer things. Not always the case, but generally, yes. So I had to upgrade this application to Expo 33 from 30. Uh, luckily they have a guide to doing this. How do I go this? Documentation, 
And if I go to uh, manage workflow, because we're doing the manage workflow, upgrading Expo SDK workflow. So they have this nice guide that shows you, let's make this bigger. Oh, why is this still showing? So upgrading from Expo SDK 30 to 31 is pretty simple. There's a few API breaking changes. If I want to look through them, which did not look fun to actually read all these things. I did not really want to read any of this. And pretty much what happened is that I kept going through all these things and the thought of having to do this pain every time was like skiing down a mountainside and getting hit with a snowball repeatedly. So I read this document, saw these things here. The most notable thing was uh, the upgrade to FTK 33 where you have to actually do these new, uh, you have to do this new module format. So if you use import, file system from Expo, you now need to actually import it from Expo file system, which is part of Expo's broad initiative to actually break up their monolithic code base. So I did this myself because I did not want to take that much time to figure it out because I did, I really had no idea how long it was going to take. So if I actually go uh, to my commit, you can see here is my upgrade to, to the latest Expo, uh, which was uh, uh, painful. I'm not going to lie. It, was, it, was, it wasn't fun, but there's a few things that was awesome about this upgrade. Uh, one of the unique things about this video is when I started was that I added TypeScript support to Expo, which back then wasn't fully supported. Now with Expo, I don't even know what version it was, but a newer version of Expo actually supports TypeScript out of the box. So a lot of this was me actually learning how to get rid of all the code that I had written to add in TypeScript support. So at the end of the day, it was these packager options that we have. Actually, let me make this bigger for y'all can see. So in AppJSON, which controls how Expo works, there's this whole packager ops things that I was telling it how to transform uh, TypeScript and TypeScript uh, TSX files, which is React inside of TypeScript files using this transform. And the big thing also was uh, switching from using the new Babel config JS and getting rid of my Babel RC file, which uh, I'm not gonna lie, that was actually the part that took me the longest because it was not obvious that I, I made the Babel config file and I forgot that I had the Babel RC file. So things were still broken because Babel was confused which Babel file to read from. And as soon as I deleted the Babel RC file, everything worked fine. And honestly, the trick that got me upgrading this the fastest was uh, one of my favorite tricks actually is what I did is I actually went to Expo and I say, you know, installation, so I can make a new, what I actually did was I actually made a uh, new Expo application. Cause I was, I was trying to make this work locally, could not figure it out. How do I do this walkthrough? Here, Expo init. So if I go to downloads, what I actually did is I made a dummy app. Gonna initialize, yes, make it blank with TypeScript. I actually want to include TypeScript by default and call it banana. This is the coolest little UI that you can actually change these things and it'll show it real time. This would be a great thing to have be open source. Very cool banana. Yes, use yarn. Cool extracting it. I don't really want it to install, but what I can actually do is uh, CD dummy app X uh, code. And what I actually did, I assumed that this code worked and uh, I pretty much compared and contrast this working example with my own example. So if I push this over to the side and put my code over here, um, I pretty much was saying, well, this is a lot of things going on on my screen at once. I was pretty much trying to compare like, why was this working? I was comparing like my app JSON to their app JSON, so this is on, on the left is their the new app JSON, the right is mine. Comparing and contrasting that, looking at Babel config, and essentially just trying to do pattern matching because that's a big part of the job. It's understanding patterns and knowing how to apply them. And until I figured out what I had to do and what it was was actually getting rid of my .babelrc file. So now, if I actually uh, let me make this bigger, let's actually run. Expo start down below. Uh, I should have, okay, cool. So it's open the packager. After all that, 
upgrading to Expo 33, which was no small task, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this is running, tunnel ready, let's run the iOS simulator. Man, developing sometimes is the silliest process. Uh, let's go here. Oh, it's loading it up. I can see that it's building my bundle. Right, yep. And it's working. The application is still working. Can I actually load it up on my phone to actually show you this? Uh, where's Expo on my phone? Expo on my phone! Okay, let's go to projects. Here we go. Here it is. It's working. Is that going to focus? Come on. Come on. You can click on a day. I mean, it works just... Inception. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> uh, it's working. Uh, just as before, uh... That, that, that's half the job, right? Being able to upgrade things. So things are still working. Um, that's all that I really did. Uh, I had this other small thing. Uh, Expo was yelling at me about circular dependencies, so I just did some code moving around to make things happier. But uh, that was that, that was the time it took. I didn't want to really bore you with that. I gave you a little bit of a tour about it, and maybe it would have been interesting to have you do it with me, but I was honestly afraid. Again, just fear. It's the fear of, uh, of being... Um, the imposter syndrome, not doing things right, um, that I didn't want to do this with you together. Okay, so now we're up to speed. We're back together, and I hope that we'll be able to finish these video, the entire application together. We, we, we've gone through enough. We don't need to worry about the fear. I've told you about that. Uh, I want to finish this application. I don't know if I'll really submit it to the App Store. That's a whole different game. I maybe leave that for another six or eight months to pass before I tackle that thing. But to get a full featured application together working is definitely a task I want to complete together. We might take a few breaks in between that process just for me to explore other things that come up. But uh, I commit to you to finish this application because we're so close. So close. If you like this video, share it with your friends, your family, your loved ones, your coworkers are probably the ones that would most appreciate these types of videos. If you are not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. That button is beautiful. Every time that number goes up, I go like this. <laughs> not even joking. My wife will tell you. I just go like this. We're out, we're out at dinner. I check my YouTube app to see what the subscriber count is. I see it goes up. I go. <laughs> so if you want to see me do that some more, hit that button. You'll hear me squeal. Until then. I will see you next week with a brand new video.